In this video, I'll think about some other limitations of looking at the average treatment effect to try to capture potential policy effects in the real world. So to help make things concrete, we'll think about a concrete example of Medicaid expansion. expansion. So imagine uh, here we have income and currently let's imagine in Missouri there's some threshold here where below this threshold. So if your income is low enough, then you are eligible for Medicaid. And what the proposed policy would change is it would move that threshold so this is the proposed threshold. It would change that income threshold so that in this little slice in the middle, these would be the newly eligible uh, people in the middle. And then anyone above that threshold would just remain ineligible. So not eligible. So this is the current threshold over there. So in this case, there's sort of two uh, limitations of the ATE we could think about. First is if we think about the ATE, that gives us the average or the mean over the entire population of the treatment effect. So in this case, when we're thinking about the specific policy change, we are really only interested in these newly eligible folks in here, right? The policy is not going to change anything about people who were already, already eligible over here, and it won't change anything for the a large number of people over here who will just be ineligible regardless of the policy change. So we don't really care about uh, what the effect of Medicaid on whatever uh, outcomes we're interested in for the uh, people at the top who are always ineligible regardless of the policy people at the bottom who are always eligible regardless of the policy. We only care about this little slice in the middle of those on the margin that will be, whose eligibility will be affected by the hypothetical policy change. So that's one thing to be aware of and think critically about in practice. You know, who is the population who's treatment effects we're interested in. Is it really everybody in the population or is it just a little slice of the population on the margin where a policy change would have an effect? Second, uh, you'll see everything so far is just about eligibility, not actually who has Medicaid. So if you're eligible, that means you can apply for Medicaid and you're allowed to get Medicaid, but it doesn't mean you're forced to get Medicaid. And 
perhaps surprisingly, um, there are many people who do not get Medicaid even though they are eligible. So on top of just thinking about this middle slice versus the full population, we would also be interested, presumably, in not only eligibility changes, but in who will actually uh, take up Medicaid, who will actually apply for <clears throat> the Medicaid health insurance and actually get it. Um, and the ATE doesn't tell us um, about uh, that sort of decision to select in the treatment or not. Um, it just tells us comparing treated and untreated individuals. Um, but we could imagine also, for example, the you know decisions to apply for Medicaid um, that may be even different for people who are already eligible versus the newly eligible individuals. Um, all that to say, it can be important to try to model that take up decision also beyond just what is the average treatment effect. Um, okay, so those are just two examples of additional limitations of the average treatment effect.